Welcome to the 6th Annual Revolver Golden Gods Awards. I'm Hard Rock Chick for Grammy.com. Good, I am a Grammy member. Great. Yes. Yeah, doing, uh, so this is the first year that they've given a Music Educator Award. I know, like that's wonderful. Yeah, I'm a music educator as well. Right. Um, I am an adjunct professor at SUNY Purchase College teaching music production. I started teaching when I was about 13 and worked my way up. I think it's really important, you know, to just like, continue to learn. You, know, you can never stop learning. Mm -hmm. And I mean, now I, I'm always listening to music. I'm always, you know, inspired. And, and to keep into that mind frame, you got to be like a six-year-old, you know, almost where, where it's like having that childlike enthusiasm for music. Because once you lose that, it's gone. And some people can get disillusioned and shitty about the music industry and whatnot because, you know, a lot of bullshit's going on. But you have to, at the end of the day, envision yourself as that six-year-old that has a guitar in the corner of your bedroom that you're just drawn towards and you want to pick it up every day because it brings you that peace and that, that freedom. You know, because you can create anything you want with three chords. You know what I mean? The Recording Academy has a number of missions. One of them that's close to our heart is music education for young people, and that's the future. And you could ask anyone here as you are, what got you started? So many people will say, I had a great teacher. We had over 30,000 music teachers uh, uh, who were in the process, and out of that, narrow down to 10 finalists and a, a really fantastic uh, recipient this year, uh, Kent Knappenberger, who many have seen, but what a great example of what a great teacher means and can do. Uh, I grew up in, in a school system in Seattle that had great um, music programs, and um, it was in the 70s, you know, and it, it, they were funded, great teachers, and my brother, my next oldest brother came out of that too and became a music teacher, he's a music teacher here in a yeah, the Holland's Opus Award, like about seven years ago, and he's, I mean, I've seen him go through school and start teaching, he's taught at the same school, raised money for the music program there, kind of single-handedly, it's a public school, and uh, in Agora, but he is... Uh, has one of the biggest jazz middle school programs in the, in the country, my brother Matt. So he started taking lessons at the age of seven. And I was so obsessed with taking lessons, and I was that's all it was my whole life, taking lessons, taking lessons. And I played so much. When I was seven, I was really little, and I played guitar so much, my hand grew bigger than the other hand because I would stretch so much. Doc Edwards, my choir director in high school, I mean, I had nothing but choir. School was just a vacuous waste of time, and if not for choir, I think I just would have shriveled up and died. I mean, it, it, it's counter, it goes counter to rock and roll, but I just wanted to sing and, and have that opportunity to do that every day with someone who was encouraging. Uh, it was just amazing. No, I mean, my guitar teacher, Leroy Wright, was amazing for me, for sure. So, uh, definitely inspired me immensely. And then, uh, I remember my football coaches and everything like that, my baseball coaches, that were huge. You know what I mean? It's just like, uh, it really is amazing because, I mean, you know, just being 47 years old, I still remember, you know, all the really cool, important things they said to me when I was just a little guy. So, you know, I still... I I actually, I was the outcast in my high school. I was always the rock and roll kid that my music teacher wanted to make an example of and would yell at me and point me out in front of everybody. But it turned out, as, as much as he and I were going head to head through all my years of high school, high school graduation, last day of the year, I got awarded the music scholarship, which was the biggest scholarship of the school. So that was his tip of the hat to me. And it turns out all that time, he was excuse riding. Me, me. <laughs> What's up, buddy? Hey, Ryan. It turns out that he was trying to make an example out of me and, and believed in me all that time and, and was using that to help drive me, which was an amazing thing. And ever since then, I was like, wow, what a cool thing. My, um, my music teacher back in high school, in junior high, actually, his name was Mr. Moore. Uh, he was the high school band teacher. And at that point, I was really trying to find myself. I was kind of messing with bass a little bit, but my mom wanted me to play the clarinet. So uh, I was learning the clarinet and all that stuff. You know, uh, <laughs> licking the reed, so to speak. <laughs> and uh, he he basically pulled me aside and was like, you know, it's clear that you don't want to do the clarinet. Look at you. What's going on? I, I know you want to play bass. Follow. 
all that. So he gave me uh, a little bit of incentive to actually go with what I wanted to do rather than what mom was telling me to do at that point. So a guitar teacher and he was kind of different he was I, I had another one before that and he was just teaching me like chords and stuff and I didn't really take to that so this guy was just like what do you like what do you listen to and I would just bring in records and he would figure them out write out the tabs for me and then I'd go home and play along with them on my record player and honestly I wouldn't have learned how to play any instrument if I couldn't have done that and felt that connection to the music where it was actually fun to do it. So, yeah. really, I owe that guy everything. A teacher? Yeah, and why? I never took a guitar lesson. <laughs> You're one of those. <laughs> I'm self-taught, you know. Uh, you know who my teachers were? Jimi Hendrix, Jeff Beck, Eric Clapton, Jimmy Page, and Pete Townsend. Those are great teachers. I used to listen to their records and learn their solos, you know, frontwards and backwards, and next thing you know, I was coming up with my own solos. That, that They were my best teachers. Well, mine would be Gene Simmons, because, <laughs> because Kiss was my favorite band as a kid, and all I wanted to do was uh, be able to do that with my life, and Gene Simmons was my favorite guy in Kiss, and I looked up to him in every way, shape, or form. He was, I think, the biggest influence on me wanting to do what I do uh, in, in my life. So he never actually gave me a guitar lesson, <laughs> but if it wasn't, I think if it wasn't for him, I could actually say, I, I don't know that this is what I would have done with my life. I'll tell you exactly who my music teachers were. Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, Rush, The Doors, Jimi Hendrix. Those were my teachers. I played those records over and over and over again and tried to emulate them and learn how those records went. And I, I feel like that's the best way to get proficient on your instrument. So my teachers are the greats. Glenn Danzig showed me how to play the guitar. And uh, my brother, he showed me the notes and Glenn showed me the two chords and that's all I know. That's all it took, huh? I guess so. You gotta play good songs. You don't have to know how to play anything. But I had a guy that I grew up and went to junior high and a little bit of high school. He was teaching me lessons. But he was this, he was in a band in the 80s and it was his heyday and he was so excited. Like, he had a picture of his old band. They were called, uh, like the Love Razors. And they were, well, he just spent the whole time talking about AA meetings and how, you know, look, man, when you're out there, there's gonna be drugs, there's gonna be booze. Do all of it. I was 12. Holy shit. So he didn't teach me how to play guitar, but he made me into the idiot I am today. <laughs> <laughs> what would be the number one thing that you think kids should learn today? Uh, get on the stage and start playing live. My biggest uh, thing when I'm coaching a young player or another musician that's starting out, you got to get up there and really do it. You can sit around in your room and learn scales and nonsense, but you got to get up on deck in front of people that are an actual real audience. Yeah. That's the true pressure. And, well, I'm uh, actually going to be teaching at, uh, at, 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 at Chuck Brennan's uh, rock school in Sioux Falls. I'm doing a guest spot, oh. and I'm teaching being a front man oh. because that is an art in and of itself. Yeah. They're singing, and then there's being a front man. There's plenty of good singers, but they don't know how to be a front man. Oh, yeah. I know so. your daughter is in a band. She is, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, what is something that maybe you taught her about being a musician that has helped her along her way? It's really not not even anything about music because music comes from your heart and from other places that I can't teach her. Um, but it's about sticking to it and, and um, if you're going to have a band member, like have communication and practice, practice more. And if you could say you're going to be someplace and do a gig and be at Soundcheck at 5, be there at 5. It sounds corny, but, uh, you know, knowledge is power. And I really believe that's what it's all about is, you know, the more knowledge, the more power. And, uh, you know, I still take lessons today. So. Well, you know, there's a lot of things you can learn, but, you know, it's three big words. Practice, practice, and practice. You know, that's what I do, you know. But you have to have... You have to have the image and you have to have the talent, you know? Without without that, you can practice as long as you want and nothing's going to happen. The whole thing is you got to practice and you got to work hard, you know? And, and you, you got to have passion for what you do and you got to love it at the end of the day. I mean, whatever, whether it's music, sports, uh, anything, anything you do in life, you have to have passion for it. That's, life's short, man. You got you, you to gotta find what you love and, and do that. Not, just to have fun. Play what's in your heart. 
in your soul and not to worry about anything that's trendy or popular or what other people tell you to do. Just just play what makes you happy. Yeah. Don't get discouraged. I tell you exactly what. Don't do this because you want chicks and money and cars and fame and all that bullshit. Do this because you love it. And if you love it and it resonates with people, maybe that stuff will come, maybe it won't, but it is not the right reason to do this. And there's way too many people getting into music and acting and entertainment because they want all the fucking stuff. And the art gets lost and the substance gets lost. Believe me, I do a lot of stuff without substance and that's work. But when it comes to music and creativity, it's all about the passion for the art. You don't have to be able to play anything as long as you can play that song. You don't have to sit there and learn all that shit. I don't even know what that shit is. <laughs> well, my my academic work is in a totally unrelated field. I studied anthropology and it had nothing to do with heavy metal, but I was always a big metal fan. And uh, uh, my, my partner, Scott, and I, we just decided, well, maybe we should do a documentary about metal. And it's funny you mention education because actually our first film has been shown in classrooms around the world yeah, because it's kind of yeah <laughs> it's 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 kind of meant to be like a 101 into metal for people who don't know much about it and for people who love the music it's kind of a defense of the music that I think a lot of metal fans have long felt has been needed Woo, I'm tired that's a wrap from the black carpet now we're gonna go into the show and wish you could be here Yes, definitely wear a condom and, <laughs> and try and avoid syphilis and herpes. Pro tip. And you'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs>